Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well today we're looking at a transparent navigation bar at the top there. As you can see it's transparent, we can see our sort of hero image behind there. As we scroll down the page it's going to stick to the top. We can see it. I've put a little colour background in there on hover just to highlight it a bit more once it's down the page but that's entirely up to you. We're using the theme builder to do this today. And if I go to another page, you can see that we've got our original header back there. So let's get started. To do this today, I'm going to be using the theme builder. To get to your theme builder, go down to your dashboard. Once down to your dashboard, go down to Divi, and there you'll find theme builder. Click on it, it'll take you to this page here. Okay, well, there's the custom header I built for our home page there. I'm going to delete that. I want to go over I'm going to save my changes. Now, if I go back to this page and refresh, we've got our original menu back up the top there. So let's say this is our home page, which it actually is for this site. We want to make this menu transparent, so it just shows off against that nice background image there. Let's go to our theme builder. Okay, once in our theme builder, I'm going to go and add a custom header. If you want this to be on all of your pages, you can add it as a global header, but I just want it to be on my front page where that hero image is. So I'm going to hit the add custom header over here. I'm going to say build custom header. And by default, it's going to give us a little section. We need to add a little row. I'm going to keep this very simple. I'll just put my logo and a menu in there. Divi comes as standard with all the light gray modules here, plenty enough to build just about any site. And they keep adding more and more. I'm going to use the actual menu module here today for this because I can add the logo and menu there. Menu that I'm going to put in there is the top menu, which is what we had on our original menu. There it is right there. I'm going to add a logo. I'm going to put a different logo in because we're going to put this logo up against a dark background. I want a light logo. I've got a light logo right here. So we can pop that in, and obviously that's way too big, but we can adjust that, no problem at all. You can choose your elements down below here, shopping cart icon and search icon if you need to. And obviously you can link it if you want to, but it's our menu, so I don't want to link it to anything. I'll come back to the background in a minute, because I am going to add a sort of opaque background so we can see the image through it, but still highlight our logo and little links up there. So let's get things looking the way we want them first. I'm going to go over to my design tab here. Layout wise is fine. I want mine left aligned at the moment, but that logo is just way too big. So if I roll down to sizing, here's the logo width right there. I'm going to drag it down to about the size that I want it. Something like that. That's fine. And now I want to pop this into the middle, so still on our design, I'll shut up the sizing, we'll go back to the top, and we'll go down to menu text here. I'm just going to roll down and align mine in the centre. And it's actually aligning it in the centre of the menu part of our little row up there, which is up here. Great, that's good enough for me. Obviously it's way too big. Let's save this, and I'll temporarily put a background colour behind this so you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to put a background colour in, let's make it black. And you can see this is way too wide, so I'm going to make my section a lot shorter for a start. To do that I'm going to go to my design, I'm going to go to padding, or spacing I should say, and to padding. I'm going to put a zero in, it'll put in the pics for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the bottom as well. That's taken it down, that's better sort of size, it's still a little too much. And so these other bits are in the row itself. So let's save our changes there and we'll go into the row, the green tab. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to go down to spacing and take the padding away, top and bottom. Well, I don't think I'll take it all away. Let's save 10 picks. Just put in the 10, it'll put the pixels for you. Hit the chain and again it'll do the bottom. That's about right. And we've obviously got a color behind this row so I need to take that away as well. So that'll be under the content at the bottom, background. Okay, so not seeing a background colour there, so that much must be in the actual module itself. So let's save this. 
we'll go into the module and blue tab for the section, green for the row, dark tab for the module. Let's have a look down here. Yeah, they've got a background in there. So I'm going to hit the trash can to take that away. And there we go. And while we're in here, I want to make my menu items light in color. So that's design, menu text, active link I'll make white and the actual menu text items I'll make white too, just for convenience. There we are, we've got it right there. Fantastic, well I don't want any color in there. Well that's not quite true. I'm gonna put a gradient background in. So we've got a little bit of black at the top and transparent at the bottom. That way it'll sort of fade into the image that's behind it. So let's save this now. We'll go back into our section what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go into the background, under color, I'm going to put transparent. And I'm also going to do that for the hover state as well. So this is common to most DV modules. If you hover over the dark writing there, you'll see these little icons pop up here. There's an arrow. We can set a desktop state when the mouse is not on it. So for the desktop state, I want transparent, which we've got there. And for the hover state, I want to make sure we got transparent as well. There we go, fantastic. Now I'm actually gonna go into my gradient next door. Now we've got color, we've got gradient, we've got background image, you've got background video, pattern, or mask there. I'm gonna add a gradient. And for my regular state, when the mouse is not on it, I'm gonna add a gradient, and for the top, I'm gonna to make it black. And for the bottom stop, I'm gonna make it transparent. And don't forget with a new gradient upgrade that they've given it, you can add as many stops as you like. I'm going to take that up slightly so it sort of fades in a bit more. I want to make sure that my logo and the text is visible. That way when it rolls over something that's white on the page, you'll still be able to read it. Okay, that works well for me. And I think I'll put in a hover gradient as well that's slightly different. I think for this one, I'll bring the opacity back up a little bit. I'll bring this down to the bottom for the hover state. I'll take the opacity down a little bit there. So we've got more of the color. That's the hover state. And here's the regular state. Fantastic. Well, let's save our changes now. Actually, before we do this, you want to decide, do you want this menu to be sticky? In other words, if you scroll down the page, do you still want to see it? Or do you want it to disappear off the top? If you want it to disappear off the top and not be sticky, we're good to go. But I want mine to be sticky. So I've go, gone into the section here, the blue tab at the top there. I'm gonna go over to advanced. Down at the bottom, we've got scroll effects. Right at the top, we've got sticky position. I'm gonna say stick to top. That way it'll stay there when we scroll down the, the page. Don't want any sticky limit, I want it to stick all the way. Great, so we should be good to go there. Let's just save our changes here. We'll save our changes. X back out. Make sure that this is actually assigned to the correct page here. So we can go up to the little cog above and here we can assign it. Well, because I had one there before, it's automatically assigned it to the home page, but usually those would be unchecked. So I'm gonna assign it to the home page but I'm also going to assign it to the page that we've got set at the home page. So if I go over here, I know that's actually called home at the bottom here. That way we're making sure there's no confusion there. So it's only going to show on the home page and that specific page, which is the home page as well. So let's save this. We'll save our changes up here. Okay, well, let's go back to our page now and refresh and see what we've got. We've got to do a little bit of adjustment on this page here. And there it is, it's up there, but our page is starting down here where the generic header started. So we need to shift this whole thing up slightly. So on this page, I'm gonna enable the visual builder. And once enabled, let's go down to our top section here. I'm guessing that's about 100 picks up there or so. So I'm gonna scoot this up by 100 picks. We can always adjust it more or less. So let's go into our top section here, little blue tab, hit the cog. I'm gonna go design, I'm gonna to go to spacing. 
And on the top, I'm going to give it some negative margin. So you can either type minus or negative symbol. I'm just going to roll down. And I'm going to add two zeros to make it negative 100. And there it is. It scooted it up over our menu there. You can see the gradient there. I've just put that there so that when it rolls over something lighter, you can actually see it. So let's save our changes here. We'll save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And here we have it. Here's our home page with the transparent navbar, or semi-transparent. You can take that gradient away if you don't like it. But I've got that up there. And that's working as we roll down the page. Fantastic. If we click on a different page, we've got our original menu there again. And if we go back to the home page, of course we've got that transparent navbar. So there you have it guys. If you don't want that hover effect there, I've just put that on so, you know, when we're over white stuff, if they have trouble reading it, once they actually click on it, they can see it better. Just don't put that in in the hover state, simple as that. So there you go guys, I hope that's answered that question. We've had a few questions on this recently. That's how to set a transparent navigation or header for your homepage with the Divi theme. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.